Welcome to lesson number four of trigonometry, special triangles, exact values, and the unit circle. For this unit, we're going to talk about exact values. And exact values in math being numbers that can only be expressed as whole numbers, fractions, or radicals. And finally, we'll be talking about the unit circle, which we are going to be using for the rest of this chapter. So in this lesson, we will determine the exact value of the sine ratio, the cosine ratio, and the tangent ratio for given angles with a reference of 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45, 60, and 90. So triangles that have these angles are going to be considered special triangles. Now let's look at the first example. So this diagram 1 shows an angle of 45 degrees in standard position. It's an isosceles triangle whose unit sides are one unit. And so remember, an isosceles triangle is a triangle which has two equal sides. The first thing we can do is determine the length of the hypotenuse. And we can do so by finding this length and using our Pythagorean theorem. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So 1 squared plus 1 squared. r squared would equal 2. And as an exact value, r would equal rad 2. So the next thing we need to do, we need to do is use SOHCAHTOA, or the x, y, r formulas to complete the sine of 45 degrees, the cosine 45 degrees, and the tan 45 degrees. And so let's use the, the mnemonics we made up in class. For, sam we use, for sine, we used seven yellow rabbits, which means that we have sine 45 degrees is equal to y over r, which is equal to 1 over rad 2. But since we can't leave this as a radical on our denominator, we need to make this rad 2 over 2. For cos 45, cos 45, remember we used the mnemonic CAT scan and x-rays. And so for CAT scans and x-rays, that's going to be cosine 45 is equal to x over r which is equal to 1 over rad 2. And remember, we can't leave that in the form so we have to rationalize the denominator. It's rad 2 over 2. And for tan, tan 45 is going to equal to y over x, or 1 over 1. And that's just equal to 1. For this next example, we're using an equilateral triangle. Triangle, and so with this equilateral triangle, all the all the equal sides are two units, and so it's two units here, two units here, and two units here. But in this case, we have a triangle that's been divided into two sides, and since this equal side was two units, that means each side must be one unit. The next thing we're told to do is to determine the length of the altitude. So we're looking for the length of the altitude. If you're not sure what the altitude is, this is the same thing as the height of this triangle. Now if we look at this, we have a right triangle. We can use Pythagorean theorem to find out the missing side. In this case, it will be our, our y value. And so if I use r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, remember I have my r squared value already. I also have my, my x squared value down here. And so we're going to have to rearrange this equation to give us to solve for y. So y squared is going to equal to r squared minus x squared. And so then I'm going to move up here with this. It's going to be equal to 2 squared minus 1 squared if I use a value, or if I use, if I'm just looking at this triangle right here. Okay, so y squared is going to be equal to 4 minus 1. And so if I'm looking for the value of y, which is in this case my height, I'm going to be left with rad 3. And now I've got to find out what all of my sine ratio, cosine ratio, and tangent ratio are going to be for this triangle. And so you know I'm, I'm using the, the sine, sine of 60 is equal to y over r, and then the cosine will be equal to x over r, 
and the 10 will be equal to y over x. So we can go ahead and just fill in what each of these ratios are going to be. So y was rad 3 over 2, this will be 1 over 2, and this will be rad 3 over 1, or simply rad 3. And these are all of our answers. So let's move on to diagram 3. Diagram 3 shows an angle, remember these are all special triangles, an angle of 30 degrees in standard position. An equilateral triangle is, is drawn whose equal sides are two units, and a horizontal altitude is drawn which divides the equilateral triangle into two congruent, congruent triangles. And so what we're told is that this is our altitude drawn right here, in this case it's not exactly the height, but it is the missing side that we're going to have to find. And since we know, again, we have an equilateral triangle whose equal sides are two, then we have a unit of one, a unit of one here, and also a unit of two. And so again, we need to find out what the height is going to be. And if we, if we compare this triangle to our above triangle, then we know that we have the same dimensions. We have two, two, and two, which means that the altitude must again be equal to rad three since it's just a similar triangle. Well, actually, these, these triangles are congruent. And so now I have to do the same thing and go about making my, my sine ratio, my cosine ratio, and my tangent ratio. And so remember, we're using y over r for sine, x over r for cosine, and y over x for my tangent. So my sine ratio is going to be 1 over 2. My cosine ratio is going to be equal to rad 3 over 2. And my tangent ratio is going to be equal to 1 over rad 3. And again, we have to rationalize this denominator, so this will be rad 3 on the top. And we will be left with rad 3 over 3 as our final answer. Now, if we look at these special triangles we're given, all these special triangles are going to be in close relation to our unit circles. Because what a unit circle is, is just a circle which has a radius of 1. And so all of these triangles that we're looking at at the top of the page, these are all the triangles that were developed on the previous example. And for each of these triangles, we, we discovered what all the trig ratios were at 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees. So now what we want to do is think about how we're going to fit these into a unit circle. And so if I look at this first triangle right here, if this was in a unit circle, we would have to divide the hypotenuse by 2. Because with a unit circle, our radius needs to be 1. And so in this case, our radius is 1, which means that in order to get 1, we have to divide all of these sides by 2 which means that my x is going to be rad 3 divided by 2, and my y is going to be 1 half, or 1 divided by 2. We did the exact same thing for this next triangle at 45 degrees, where our radius is square root of 2, or rad 2. Now, in order to get a radius of 1 below, we have to divide by rad 2, or by square root of 2. And if we do so, we are going to get 1. Rad 2 divided by rad 2 is just going to be 1. And on the bottom, we're going to get rad 2 divided by 2 because we're going to end up rationalizing the denominator afterwards. And so on each side, we're going to end up with rad 2 over 2 and rad 2 over 2 again. Now for this third triangle, we're going to do the exact same thing. And we are going to think about how can we get a radius of 1 out of this triangle. And so if we look at what happened down here, we did the exact same thing as we did in my first triangle. Because these are actually the same triangles, the only difference is, is that this triangle has been flipped over. So if I divide 2 by 2, I'm going to be left with 1. And if I, if I divide 1 by 2, I'm going to be left with 1 half. And if I divide rad 3 by 2, I'm going to be left with rad 3 over 2. Now this is interesting because this is exactly what we did on the previous example. Now what we need to do is we need to think about what are the actual 
ratio is going to be for all of these different triangles. Now if we look back at what the ratios were for our, our triangles we solved in the first example, they're going to apply to the same angles, angle 30, 45, 60, because if we have the sine ratio of 30 degrees, it's going to be exactly the same as the sine ratio of 30 degrees for our initial triangles, which we already solved. Which means that if I have 30 degrees right here, remember that the sine, the sine of x in this case is going to be sine is equal to y over r. And so because my y value is 1 half and my r value is 1, my radius is 1, if I divide 1 half by 1, I'm just going to be left with 1 half. For the cosine, if I divide my cosine at being x over r, if I divide my rad 3 divided by 2 divided by 1, I'm again going to be left with rad 3 over 2. And finally, for my, my tan, if I, if I look at what I discovered for my tan ratios for each of my initial examples, so I'm just going to turn back a page. And if I look at what tan 30 was, I, I had tan 30 being rad 3 over 3. So I'm just going to leave this as rad 3 over 3. And now I need to figure out what my, what my ratios are going to be for 45 degrees as well as 60 degrees. So if I look at 45 degrees for my sine ratio in this triangle up here, I'm going to, I'm going to think about what sine actually is. Remember that seven yellow rabbits, our acronym, is sine is equal to y over r. Again, I'm going to be left with rad 2 divided by 2 divided by 1, which is just going to be rad 2 over 2. I'm going to do the same thing for my, my cosine of 45 degrees. And that's just going to be, again, rad 2 divided by 2, because all I did was I divided x over r, which was equal to rad 2 over 2 over 1. And so that's just going to stay as rad 2 over 2. Now again, I'm going to look at what I discovered my, my tan ratio to be for 45 degrees. And if I look at my previous page, the tan ratio at 45 degrees was 1. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a 1 right here. And now I need to look at my ratios for 60 degrees, for my triangle at 60 degrees, my last triangle. And so um, I can find out that, again, y over r is going to be rad 3 over 2. Because if I divide it by 1, it's just going to be rad 3 over 2. Uh, the same thing for cosine, the cosine of 60 degrees. It's going to be x over r, which is just going to be 1 half. And then I'm, look at, I'm going to look at my tangent ratio that I discovered on the previous page for tan 60 degrees. That's right here. I figured out that tan 60 degrees is just going to be equal to rad 3. Now we're going to use these ratios a lot for our special triangles. And so it would be a really good idea if you just kept this, this chart in the back of your mind and maybe put a bunch of stars around it or or highlight it just so you remember that this is something that you want to go back to. Okay, so this is this chart is something that's really important and one that you're going to keep on using. So do your best to kind of keep these ratios in the back of your mind and, and so you can just pull it up quickly when you need it. Now we've looked at angles 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And so for our special triangles, we're only left with angles 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Now in order to solve this problem, I'm just going to start by drawing a, a grid. Now remember where 0 degrees is on this grid, it's, it's going to be on the far right. And oh, let me move my camera over a bit so you can see that. So it's going to be on the far right. And remember that 90 degrees is right on top here. And so if I have a rotation angle of 0 degrees, I'm going to draw this in black. If I have a rotation angle of 0 degrees, then that's where my radius is going to be. And if my radius is 0 degrees, and in this case it's 1 since this is a 
unit circle. And so if you imagine this this arm going going from 0 degrees to 90, if I'm at 0 degrees, then I'm going to have an x value equal to 1. So this is going to be one unit here. But my y value is going to equal 0. If my if my x value is equal to 1 and my y value is equal to 0, my r value is also equal to 1 because remember that this unit is my is my radius. Okay, so if I'm thinking about an, a rotation angle of 90 degrees, if I rotate this up 90 degrees, let me switch to my pen again to black, then I'm going straight up to 90 degrees up top here. And in this case, now my x value is going to be equal to 0. And my y value is going to be equal to 1. Since I was 1 here, my radius is now going to be 1. And so now for this question, we want to think about what our actual trig ratio is going to be when we have an angle of 0 degrees and an angle of 90 degrees. And so for, for this first one, let's just write what our ratios are. That's going to be y over r. And since in this case, y was equal to 0 and r was equal to 1, my sine ratio at 0 degrees is also going to be equal to 0, because so I go 0 divided by 1. For my cosine ratio, or x over r, I'm going to go 1 divided by 1, and so my cosine at 0 is going to be 1. And my tangent ratio, if that's y over x, I'm going to be left with 0 divided by 1, and again I will have a ratio of 0. Now let's look at our, our angle at 90 degrees. If my sine is y over r, and my y value is 1, and my r value is 1, that's going to equal 1. My cosine is x over r, and if my cosine, if my x value is 0 here, and my r value is 1, it's going to be again 0 over 1, which is equal to 0. And now I look at my tangent ratio, which is y over x. And if I have a y value of 1 and an x, x value of 0, we'll have a divide by 0 error. And that just means that this number is undefined. And so explain why 10, 90 is undefined. Because we cannot divide, we cannot divide by 0 and is therefore not defined. The next thing we're going to use, we're going to do is just fill in this chart. And this chart is going to be useful for solving trig ratios of the special triangles. Now to fill in this chart, all we're going to do is go back to the, uh, the first two examples we did where we were finding out what the ratios were. And we're going to take the, the chart we already made, being this one, and just superimpose all this information into our new chart. So it's all located in one nice and easy chart that we could use. And so I'm just going to go through and fill this out. If I had anything at 0, so my sine ratio was 0, my cosine ratio was 1, and my tan ratio at 0 degrees was 0. Now at 30 degrees, I had sine ratio of 1 half, rad 3 over 2, rad 3 over 3, or 1 over rad 3, but it's more appropriate to leave it like this. And then at 45 degrees, I had rad 2 over 2. Again, I had rad 2 over 2, ratio of 1. Rad 3 over 2, 1 half, rad 3. And then I had 1, 0. And remember, my tan of 90 was undefined. So this is a chart that, again, you need to memorize. And actually, if you're going to memorize any of these charts, this would be the one to do because it has all of your sine ratios, all your, your sine ratios, cosine ratios, and tan ratios for your special triangles. And so those special triangles were 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is look at how can we determine the exact values of trig ratios using our chart. Okay, so we're going to use this chart 
to solve the question, the questions down here. And so let's begin with, with class example number 1a. Find the, write the following in terms of a reference angle and determine the exact value of sine 210 degrees. Now in order to solve these questions we need to make our quadrants again and we are going to follow our cast rules. So C A S T where cast or add sugar to coffee. Now if I, if I look at where sine 210 degrees in it, 210 degrees is, I know that that's going to be in my quad 3. Okay, so this is going to be in quad 3. And I know that if it's in quad 3, then my sine ratio is negative. And so I'm just going to make a note that sine ratio is negative. Another thing you can do is just make a negative sign and put a circle around it, just so you know that that ratio is going to be negative. And now, if I went, if I made a rotation of 210 degrees, then I have to take, I have to figure out what is my reference angle going to be, because that's going to be my the sign that I'm need, I'm going to need to determine. And so if I go 210, and think about what from 180, 180 plus 210 makes um, 210 degrees, that will be the ratio that I'll use my chart to actually solve. And so if I go sine 210 degrees minus 180 degrees, I'll be left with 30 degrees. And remember that this is going to be a negative, negative sine 30 degrees. If I look at what sine 30 is, I'll go back up to my chart. At sine 30 degrees, I had one half. And so I'll go back down to my question, which means, and remember that my sine ratio is negative here, so I'm going to have a negative ratio of one half. So we'll do the exact same thing for cosine of 300. So if I have a cosine of 300 and I follow my cast rule, Cosine 300 will be in quadrant 4, which means that we will be positive. I'm just going to put a positive sign in a circle, reminding me that my overall ratio must be positive. Now I need to dis discover what my reference angle is going to be. My reference angle is going to be right here. And so right here is going to be 360 degrees. And if I'm at 300 degrees, I have to go from 300 to 360 degrees, which would give me a difference of... 60. 360 minus 300 is going to give me 60 degrees as my reference angle. And so I need to look at my chart, and I look at my chart at cosine 60 degrees, I'm going to be left again with one half for my ratio. So at cos 300, we have cosine 60 degrees, and that will be one half. Now let's look at 10, 225 degrees. We're going to again begin with drawing our quadrants. And if we look at 225 degrees, this is going to be in quad 3. It's going to be in quad 3. And so if I follow my cast rules, then my 10 ratio is also going to be positive in, in the third quadrant. And so since that's good, that's positive, I put my circle with the positive sign in just to remind me at the very end to make it positive or to leave it as positive. And now I have to, now I have to find out what my reference angle is going to be. So if I have 225 and I subtract 180, I'm going to be left with one with sorry with 45 degrees. So 225 minus 180 will be left with 45 degrees. And the next thing we have to do is find out, okay, what was the tan of 45? And so if we look back up to our chart and we look for tan 45 degrees, my ratio is going to be 1. And so let me write that down here. It's equal to 1. 
Let's look at class example number two. Without using technology, determine the exact values of theta, where a cosine theta is equal to negative rad three over two, where theta is greater or equal to zero degrees or less than or equal to 360 degrees. So the first thing we're, we're gonna need to do for this question is draw again our grid of our quadrants and think about where all of our, our trig ratios are positive and negative. Because we're told, we're told that we have a a cosine ratio that is negative. Okay, so we have to think about what that negative sign means. What this means is that because it's a cosine ratio and because it's negative, it can't be in either quad one or quad two, since cosine ratio would be positive in both of these. So that leads us to believe, and that gives us the information that we need in order to solve this problem. So our our angles are going to be in quads two and quad three. Now the next thing we need to know is if we have a ratio of rad 3 divided by 2, like we do here, then that means that if I pull out my chart, where do I have a, ra a cosine ratio of rad 3 over 2? Right here at cosine 30 degrees. So that tells us that our reference degree, or sorry, our reference angle is going to be 30 degrees here and 30 degrees here. Now from, from this we can if we can determine what theta is. And so if I if I'm at 180 degrees right here on this side, then if I go up by 30, I'm gonna go 180 degrees minus 30 degrees, which would leave me with 150. Now on the other side, if I go 130 degrees away from 180, so I'll call that theta one and this I'll call theta two. I'll have 180 degrees plus 30 degrees since I moved my terminal arm away from 180 degrees. So I went 180 plus 30, that's gonna leave me with 210 degrees. And so there I have it, those are my, my values for theta, are gonna be 150 degrees and 210 degrees. Now let's look at this next question. If I have a 10, theta is undefined. So I have 10 undefined. Now, if I look at my, my special ratios for my special triangles, my tan theta was undefined at 90 degrees. And so on our, on our X and Y axis here, there's gonna be two places where um, we're gonna have 90 degrees. So remember 90 degrees as a reference angle will be found right here but it's also found down here at 270, especially since we're using 180 as that reference. And so, since it can be either one of these, um, either one of these, theta is then going to be either equal to 90 degrees or 270 degrees. Okay, so again, I remember I encourage you to just pause the video wherever, wherever you want, and to go back and rewind, or or even just pause and see if you can do the questions ahead by yourself. But let's now move on to class example number three. So class example number three says that the point P negative three and rat three is on the terminal arm of angle theta. Without using technology, complete the following questions. Draw the angle in the center position and mark the point P on the terminal arm. And so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is draw what this actually looks like. My x-axis here and my y-axis top, and now I gotta plot the points negative three and rad three on my graph. And so negative three on my x is gonna be over here, and I have a positive rad three, and so I'm gonna write draw it like this: negative three and rad three. And this is point P. And now what I need to do. Once I've drawn my angle, I need to state the values of x and y, and hence the value of tan theta. And so remember, my, my x value was negative 3. My x value was equal to negative 3, and my y value is equal to rad 3. y is equal to rad 3. And now we need to find out the tan of this. So tan theta is equal to y over x which is equal to y being rad three and x 
be a negative 3. I can also rewrite this as negative rad 3 over 3. Now if we look at <clears throat> we look at our ratios in our, in our chart, where do I have a ratio of rad 3 over 3? Well, that's going to be at 10, 30 degrees. So I know that my reference, since my, my ratio is rad 3 divided by 3, my reference angle must be equal to 30 degrees. And now I need to find my rotation angle. So if I have a rotation angle, and if I use my, my, uh, my cast rule, I have a negative ratio, which means that my 10 cannot be in this, this, uh, this quadrant, and it, cannot, it can neither be in this first quadrant. And since I have a, a reference angle of 30 degrees, it has to be negative. And so my rotation angle is going to be equal to 180 degrees, and it's going to end up in this quadrant over here, since I, I already know it's in this quadrant to begin with. But I know it's going to be, I know the exact value of it, since I'm going to go 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. And that's going to leave me with a reference angle, or sorry, with a rotation angle of 150 degrees. And I'll just move that down there so you can see that a little better.